Now that we power back, welcome back to some more Stormworks. I'm Stormrunner Gaming, and today I am here back with that major update, number 11, the modular engines, and much more. And yeah, there's a few problems with them here and there. Hold on, before I blast your guys' ears out with the, the tune of it trying to start itself back up here, my little modular engine in my go-kart... Yeah, there's been a ton of problems with overheating engines. It's probably one of the biggest topics to talk about right now. So one of the things I've done is I've taken just about, not every configuration, but a ton of different configurations and built my own little test bench to see what is the best type of cooling for our engines here. I'd like to add a quick note before we get started, testing some temperatures on my engine test bench here. I'm currently in version 1.1.3, the 64-bit, so, you know, in the future with more updates, the results here may change. And that being said, if you want to test it out at any time in any update, I'll be leaving this engine test bench in that description down below, so it'll be on the workshop for anybody out there to grab it see how I've made, you know, the engine designs here so they can build them for yourself. I have my little test bench here set up with a small engine, you know, a radiator to keep it cool. And I'm just going to be seeing kind of what temperature it maxes out on here. I did limit the RPS, so we should only be getting eight to nine RPS. And Oh yeah, um, something else I forgot to mention to you guys. There's a uh, 24 other engines behind me in sequential rows with crazy different builds and models and everything ranging from using heat exchangers to more radiators it was just a kind of insane test bench where i kept copying and pasting more engines to see the best kind of design here and i'm going to go through each one here because there are some differences between all of these different test benches here the first one, pretty plain, pretty simple. It's just got the regular radiator, the original radiator on there. Nothing too crazy there. We have that new radiator with the fan and two large pumps on this one. So I do also have another variant with the regular pumps. We have the liquid to liquid heat exchanger with the electric radiator here. We also have the water glitch. Now, it does seem like they've fixed the water glitch somehow. It just doesn't work as well. It does still cool a little bit because I do have a baseline somewhere around here without any cooling. It does a little bit better than that one, but still, it's just pretty weak nowadays. And I did do my own new water glitch. Instead of using the pumps, I used impeller pumps and it's actually run by the engine. So, I don't know if you'd call this cheating or not, because it's slowing the RPS of the engine down, but, I mean, you have to run the impeller pump somehow, and it drained battery power too much when I tried it in that direction. We've got, oh hey look, our baseline over here. It has no cooling at all, sitting at a nice 69 degrees right there. And then we have the big boy over here, the large 5x5 electric radiator doing some powerful cooling on that engine at 36 degrees. And then I've got the double as well, just to see, make sure as you keep stacking them in a row or whatever, add more and more here, that it'll give you better cooling. And it does, because we're at 29 over here at that 7.7 .7 RPS. Moving along here, we have the OG heat sink connected to an engine, doing some good cooling and the test branch off of this one, I just put the heat sink in a little block of water. I didn't know if it was going to do anything, because when I first, one of my first boats I actually built, I thought putting the heat sinks in water, like at the bottom of your boat, would give you better cooling. So I'm like, mm, maybe I'll try that out here. And there seems to be no difference really, so... Oh well, I don't know, just wanted to see if it would work. And then we have, well, the first one I actually built out of this entire test bench. The OG little radiator here with two regular pumps on it. And, you know, keeps it cool. 47 degrees right now at uh, 7 RPS. And then 
I did vary this a little because another thing I found in testing with the electric one over there, as we'll see in a second, for some reason where you add water into the system changes the maximum temperature. So if you put it on this side where it's going into the radiator, it has a higher temperature, but if you add it in where it's coming back, it gives you a lower temperature. I I don't know why the game cares where you put water into your system, but it's not very much of a difference here, but on those electric radiators, it will definitely be a bigger difference. And then over here, I just put two in sequence, so we could kind of just see how they do against, especially against the electric ones was more why I did two here, but you know, I think I have a creation or two like this, and you can definitely see the 37 to 46. That extra radiator there is doing a lot of work now. And then we come to the prize child, the A-plus design here. That 3x3 electric radiator here with just two regular pumps. Uh, and as we go down the line with different variants, I put that little water tank in different sides. Uh, just to see if it would give better or worse cooling, and then I did both on this side. For some reason, even though this one has both here, you can see putting it on the returning side still gives a better cooling for some reason. And there is a better difference of 2 degrees here. Yeah, 39 for both of these guys, but it's 37.9 37 on this one so far. And then as we move down the test line, I kind of went crazy with more and more radiators. Now we've got the 2 design here, which is at 30. The 4 design, which is at 28. But then it just gets weird. The 8 radiator design goes back up to 32 degrees. And then the 8 with a larger tank is at 34. For some reason, I have more radiators in the 4 and more water in the system but it's worse. I don't know if the pumps aren't able to get it through fast enough. Maybe that's something I'll test. And we have the insanely large test bench here back out from the workshop after, you know, copy and pasting and replacing those pumps with large pumps. And I'll be quiet for a second because I love the sound of all these engines starting up. And the army is alive. All right, we'll test. We'll test back. We'll catch back up with the large pumps in the back over there in a minute. Let's round out the rest of the testing with the other test benches here. I did start with the heat exchangers on the left side of the main engine there. Testing out the liquid to air, air to liquid, I guess. And, you know, does all right. We can't really compare it now because they're all warming back up again. But as far as I've tested, that one, you know, keeps it cool. Then we've got an air-to-air -air heat exchanger, the smallest one here at 2 to 2. And I did do a little test branch off of that just to see if it was actually working. Because I put the pump with fluid ports on the top here and I didn't do either that on the other side. And as you can already tell, yeah, they're starting to have a little bit of a gap between temperatures here. At that one, closing in on 60, and that guy's still at 54. Alright, moving on. This is one I really wanted to test. It's the radiator, but it uses the engine's own power for some impellers instead of pumps. So as you can see, we're moving a little bit of water with the engine's own power. And this one is always a top contender when I watched the, you know, smorgasbord of temperature dials over there. It was always one of the lowest temperatures, but for some reason it also died pretty quickly when I pushed up the power. And I'll show you later what I mean by pushing up the power. And of course, we have to get the largest heat exchangers in. I didn't do all of the variants of the heat exchangers. I did the smallest ones and the largest ones, especially to see the different heat exchange values or, you know, the range, how fast it's going to be. I, I think you guys know what I mean, but, you know, it's doing okay. I've had some problems here and there with 
the heat exchangers, but I'm happy that some of them are working. And then right here, we just have the regular electric radiator, the three by three, but it does not have any pumps on it. And it's doing pretty bad already, getting close to 70 degrees there. And then last but not least, we have our large, I think, air to liquid, which does an amazing job of keeping the two temperatures right next to each other, but for some reason, the air is not cooling the liquid here. So hopefully that gets fixed in a update or something, or maybe I just did it wrong. All right, to quickly catch you guys up, I've been letting these engines run for about 10 minutes here, just to let them kind of equalize temperatures out because some of them get pretty close to others' temperatures. So I just wanted to give you a quick 1 to 26 worst to best here and I did add one more engine while I was waiting I saw these temperature or not temperatures these fluid values jumping up and down so I thought what if we just put one pump on here and it definitely does a bit worse here so after that let's start with our 1 to 26 from worst to best here no surprise in worst place here we have our no cooling engine, no radiator, nothing connected up to that at 70.9 degrees here. So that is our first place. In second place, from worst to best, we have that single OG radiator here with no pumps on it. So you definitely want to add some pumps onto your engines, at least to the radiators, so that it actually can move water into the radiator, cool it off, and bring it back to give you a nice and cool temperature there. And in third place here, we have that 3x3 electric fanned radiator with no pumps on it, just like the OG radiator. It's about the exact same temperature, but they both, you know, both don't hold a good temperature at our 7.7 .7 RPS of 70 degrees, just about. So this takes our third place here. And in fourth place, with 68.1 degrees, we have that large 9x5 air liquid heat exchanger. And I was really hoping this would do better comparative to its size. As you can see, temperature A and B are being regulated very quickly. What I mean by regulated is it is exchanging heat as it's supposed to very quickly because of its large size, but the air is taking a while to get through and actually cool the system. It might be due to the fact that I'm incompetent of building a air system, but for now, if I can't fix my design, this is kind of just where I have to place it in fourth place. In fifth place at, I think, 63 degrees, 63.7, it's going up again for some reason, even though they've been idling at the exact same RPS for 10 minutes now is our 2x2 liquid to liquid heat exchanger. As you can tell, the radiator is doing a very good job of dissipating heat here. It's only at 15 degrees, but that side of the system is at 16 degrees, while the engine side is at 63 degrees. And then I slapped it on here in sixth place, but this is our 8 radiator behemoth with only one pump on it, sitting at about 61 degrees now, so... It's got some lackluster performance just because we don't have two pumps. So remember to add that second pump in for a return here. In seventh place with this little small engine here, we have that 2x2 air-to-air -air heat exchanger. Just barely beating out that water-to-water 2x2 -water heat exchanger by just about one degree there, I think. But it still doesn't do a great job at cooling, so that's why from worst to best, it lands in 7th place. And in 8th place, we have that air to liquid heat exchanger, the 5x3. It's doing a pretty decent job keeping us at around 59 degrees here. But mm, I don't know how well air actually cools things, so that's kind of why it landed here in 8th place now. In ninth place here, we have that large 5x5 liquid heat exchanger with a small 3x3 electric radiator to it. I mean, I had high hopes for this one, but it still doesn't seem like it's able to transfer that much heat for us here. In number 10, we have my water glitch here with two impellers instead of pumps. 
I mean, it keeps the engine decently cool at 49 degrees. In 11th place, we have that OG radiator with two pumps on it. And we can quickly move to number 12 because it's sitting right next to it. At the exact same temperature, we have the heat sink here, so they don't seem to vary that much. So both the OG cooling systems for 11 and 12 have the exact same temperature. And by a tiny pinch lower, I think, we have the heat sink covered in some water here, a water tank, which is in our 13th, just about the middle here from worst to best. In 14th place, we have that OG radiator, but the tank is on the return side. Still not sure why it is how it is, but it decreases the temperature by like 0.2 or 0.3. So it does differentiate itself a little bit here. In 15th place, we have the original water glitch, just two pumps going in and out of a custom designed tank here with a fluid spawner in it. You know, this used to be the king of cooling, but it seems like they actually have fixed the glitch per se. It does cool it decently well, cause you know, right next to it is no cooling at all at 72 degrees. This guy's sitting at 47 degrees. So, you know, it still does cool your engine, but definitely not as well as it used to because it is in 15th place out of 27 here. In 16th place, we have an engine with that 3x3 fanned radiator, but it has fluid tanks on both sides. I don't know why this gives us the worst of any performance, either left, right, or both tanks, but that's just where it falls. In 18th place, we have the second engine I built for this system. It's just that 3x3 electric radiator with two pumps on it and the tank being on the outgoing side. Now, it keeps it pretty cool at 40 degrees here, just about. So, it's getting up close to one of the best designs here. In 19th place, just barely beating out one electric radiator is two of the original heat radiators. So, they just barely beat it out by about one degree here because that one was sitting at 40 degrees this one is at 39. In 16th place we have that 3x3 electric radiator but the water tank is on the return side so no matter where I tested this and I tested it with a couple different systems with the regular OG cooling radiator and with the fan one and the large one Every single time I put the tank on the return side, it decreased the temperature. Here, it dropped it by about 2 degrees. In 21st place, we have this little light green one with the 5x5 electric radiator on it with two fans running it. It actually gives it a pretty cool 36.9 degrees. We're getting into the point differences here, but it does a very good job with that large radiator here, keeping it pretty cool. In 22nd place, this is another one of my little brainchilds here. It's two impellers connected up to an electric heat radiator here, you know, with the fan spinning all around there. Really, the only reason this comes so close to the top plates here in 22nd is due to the fact that the engine is expelling some of its RPS running those impellers. So when we ramp these things up, it's not going to do as well because the cooling just isn't there. But at this specific throttle, you know, it ranks pretty high. In 23rd place, coming in at 33.7 degrees right now, is the 8 radiator behemoth with large pumps and a medium water tank here. Not exactly sure why it's worse than some of its competitors down the line as you can see, but that's where it lands in 23rd place. In 24th place, this little engine I'll be presenting to you guys has that 8 radiator behemoth design yet again, but it's got two small pumps and a small tank on the return. So, for some reason, this has some insane cooling power to it, keeping it at that 35.5, just about 35.5 degrees there. In 25th place, our top three for the best here, we have our light green engine here with just two 
electric radiators with those little fans running on them you know tank on the return side and two small pumps how an eight radiator behemoth with two different designs don't beat this out is beyond me but you know keeping it at that 31.2 or 3 degrees there so it's our third best here in 25th place in 26th place here the number two for the best we have two large heat radiators here with those double fans running on it keeping it at 29.8 degrees one of only two in the 20 degrees here at our 7.7 .7 rps these big radiators definitely do give us a ton of cooling power and it's cool to see when you have them in succession this one is getting at about 24 degrees well, this one is about 21 degrees. You can already see the reduction in heat between these two large radiators. And this result astounds me, but in 27th place, the best cooling engine we have here, basically first place if we were doing best to worst, but we're doing worst to best. We have our kind of banana colored engine here. I don't know what you'd really call that, but it has four electric radiators, two small pumps, and the tank on the return. I don't know why this is like the Goldilocks design, but it's holding at almost exactly 29 degrees here. And another cool thing, just like the large radiators, we can see from each one that the heat is dissipating from each radiator here, going down from that 23 on the input down to 16 over here and you know keeping it that pretty nice and cool design so that is the results 1 to 27 1 being the worst 27 being the best here just keep that in mind when you build your cooling systems so definitely a powerhouse of the cooling world right now is those new fanned radiators it seems like the heat exchangers are very weak for some reason or another even the large ones can't dissipate heat very well so I would kind of just avoid them for now unless they get a buff in the future. But I love these little fanned radiators and powerhouses. Just two of these large radiators seem to be able to kind of keep your engine in check. And I've got two more things for this video. First off, we're just going to blow up the engines now. Give them a little bit more throttle. As you can see, all of them are connected to the same throttle, giving us a good amount of smoke. We're just going to see which ones explode first here. Now, I'm assuming the one without any cooling at all is going to go first, so we'll stand here. And I have uh, the fire extinguishers just so that they don't, you know, contaminate other engines with their fire. So, you know, I can just immediately put them out. That guy went first. He seems to be pretty on fire. That's not good. Oh, we got more. What do we got over here? That's surprising. The air-cooled ones have gone now. Oh, that's not surprising. The large one that didn't really cool much is having problems. We've got the large liquid-to-liquid -liquid is gone now. We have... Oh, the air-to-liquid 5x5 five five is gone. Oh, plenty of them over here. The small liquid heat exchange. Oh, really? The 3x3 with the large pumps went. Well, it's no surprise the one without pumps went over here. My own water glitch has died there. How about the regular water glitch? The regular water glitch died as well. That's surprising. The large radiators destroying this test, keeping them at a good temperature. Surprising enough, single heat sink and single radiators over here with pumps are keeping it in check for now we gotta just pump up the heat here that's surprising the heat radiator with the fan is having some trouble here overheating a little bit oh and these guys have already gone back here i didn't realize that might have tainted this engine here this guy probably would have been fine if i put out the fire there so it definitely seems like if you put at least two of these radiators in a line, definitely four, it's keeping it in some pretty good temperatures here. Even one with that uh, single tank on the return side, 78 degrees, it's doing pretty good. 
Let's see what else is doing half decent. Uh, two radiators, keeping it at 78 degrees as well. Two of the OG ones. So if you've set up something like this before in any vehicle, it should be able to keep your vehicle, you know, decently cooled at 20 RPS. Of course, if we pump that up even higher, it would have some difficulty in the future. Interesting to see the regular radiators holding on for dear life at about 100 degrees. If we push them any higher to more RPS, they'd, they'd be gone. But I'm definitely liking our number one over here, our best cooling at 55 degrees for 20 RPS. So yeah, I don't know if the results are really going to go any differently. I do have one other test. Somebody asked me in a comment about seawater does it damage engines if you put it in a cooling system and the regular gearboxes do they break if you don't disengage and re-engage the clutch and I do have an answer for that as well so we can get rid of the insane amount of humming from these engines and I'm gonna move over to one of my newer vehicles I've been doing a lot of testing on now I'm not really gonna be showing off this vehicle right now all we need to be aware of is that I've replaced all of the cooling systems with seawater instead of fresh water and this gearbox does not disengage its clutch when going to the next gear so we'll see how long it lives you know just drive it around a little bit here there and everywhere so far we're doing pretty well temperature is rising and i do want to note that it has the water glitch cooling it so you know, it doesn't have the best performance for cooling. I'm really tempted to put one or maybe even two of those 5x5 five five electric radiators in here. Because those seem to stand the test of time. As you can see, I don't have very high RPMs on this engine. Nor does the small electric engine connected to the cooling system. But still, it does create a lot of heat. So I'm interested in seeing if that radiator would actually break some things here but as you can see i'm not having any problems with the gearboxes breaking or anything hold on let me turn on rear wheel steering so i can actually make it around the turn but it's a large truck here but i will test out real quick i'll bring back that test bench and see if a radiator itself not the water glitch breaks when putting seawater in it so I did actually test this for a longer amount of time. I know you're saying, Storm, you only tested it for a minute or something here. Yeah, I only drove it around for a lap, but I drove it around the entire mainland and I didn't have any problems with my gearbox design here, not disengaging and re-engaging the clutch or the seawater and at least a water glitch here, but that might be different for the new gearboxes, I know the new gearboxes will break if you don't disengage and re-engage the clutch. So those are the small gearboxes there. I'll show you real quick what I'm talking about. I have the... Huh? Where's the regular gearbox? Did they take it out? <gasps> I've got like a relic here of Stormworks. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Let me search gear again. I got a couple of microcontrollers. Can can you just gearbox depreciated? What does that mean? Can you are you not supposed to use these anymore? I mean, I've already designed the entire truck around these gearboxes, so oh well. Anyways, I know these gearboxes, the one by ones, three by threes, five by fives that have slapped on the top, these you need to disengage and re-engage your clutch, or they will break relatively quickly. Like I'm talking about you couldn't even make it around one lap of the airport I'm at with those gearboxes. Alright, I'm on my temperature test bench and I've switched this singular engine over to seawater instead of fresh water. So if it's the only one to blow up, we know that seawater is definitely the problem within that engine. Even though it's got seawater in it, it's been running for a few minutes now and the temperature hasn't really changed that much. I have vehicle damage on now and it doesn't seem to be doing anything. This is... I was just testing it within a closed loop and I switched this tank 
to some seawater, so I'm not entirely sure if seawater is going to do anything to your engines just yet in version 1.1.3, mm, but it might in the future, so just look out for that. That is where I will be ending my episode here. If Hopefully you guys got some good information about my crazy long list of engines and everything I've got here in this test bench. Yet again, it is in that description down below if you want to pick it up for yourself. Mess around with some of these designs, you know, I don't know, make something better. If you guys have some really good cooling designs that I missed here, leave a comment down below. Because I'm always interested in what I did not do here. Or like better designs that I don't know about. Because I do build stuff in Stormworks as well. So I do need to cool some engines. Anyway, that is where I will be ending this episode. So of course if you guys did like this, please leave a like. And consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with Stormworks and more of my content. But I've never been great. Goodbye. So people need me. And I need to go.